Hi parents and welcome back to Kind of Smoke Breastfeeding Talk. I have just about an hour before I have to go and pick up the kids from school so I thought I would take this opportunity and um, get myself a cup of tea and sit down for my first ever YouTube Q&A, breastfeeding Q&A. So grab yourself a tea or a coffee as well as we get through some of the most common questions I get asked as a lactation consultant. As I'm filming on my phone, I've compiled some notes here. I'm not sure whether we get to all the questions today, but we can do more Q and A's in the future. So one of the most frequently asked questions is, how long should my baby nurse at each feeding? So wouldn't it be great if we could say to parents, your baby needs to feed for 20 minutes every three hours to thrive. Unfortunately, that's not the case because every mom and every baby is different. And also every feeding session is different. Um, it's comparable to the way we eat. We sometimes take a main meal and then we have a snack or we um, have a cup of tea an hour after our dinner. So not um, every feeding will be a main meal, so to speak. So it's much more important to watch your baby rather than the clock. And watching the baby rather than the clock uh, is with regards to baby's hunger cues, but also with regards to their feeding behavior at the breast. So what kind of feed is it? Is it a, a good quality feed with lots of sucks and swallows where you see your baby go through the sucking pattern where they create a milk flow and then they have active, active sucks and swallows of one to one or two to one and then your breast softens, your baby gets full up, they relax, they open their hands and their fists and they detach themselves and are content. Or do they come off um, because the feeding may have been more of a non-nutritive feed, which would be that the baby has not gone through that sucking cycle of deep sucks and swallows and may have only done more comfort sucking during that feed. So one baby could spend 20 minutes on the breast doing active sucks and swallows, transferring loads of milk, mom is softening, she may feel her milk flowing, although that is not a necessary requirement. Whereas the other baby also spends 20 minutes at the breast, but snoozes a lot, does a lot of non-nutritive sort of flutter sucking rather than the deep nutritive suck swallows. And um, then obviously, although both babies have spent 20 minutes at the breast, the first baby will have transferred much more milk. So that's why you cannot put a certain number on how, how long a baby should feed for. So the next question is then, how can you tell that your baby is getting enough if you're supposed to watch your baby and not the clock, what you're observing in your baby rather than the clock. One of the uh, answers is the answer to the first question. So it's important when your baby feeds that they're going through active and nutritive sucks and swallows and a good quality feeding to transfer milk actively. And although you're not supposed to watch the clock, especially in the early days, you want your newborn to feed at least eight or more times in 24 hours. So you want to get at least eight or more feedings into a 24 hour period, into a day. So if you feel that your baby is not meeting that target because they're sleepy, do offer the breast by waking them, maybe taking their clothes off and just bringing them skin to skin. Skin to skin is ideal because it triggers uh, baby's natural feeding reflexes and most babies they are starting to root and seek the breast when they're in skin contact. Then you would also want to keep an eye on your baby's nappies. So logically what goes in must come out again. So if they're um, getting enough milk they um, are expected to have six to eight wet nappies from day five onwards and they should be good heavy nappies and the urine shouldn't be concentrated and dark brown, so clear or yellow. 
and also they should have bowel movements two to three times a day and um, the size of the bowel movement should be at least a, the, the size of a two euro coin and the color is mustardy yellow with cd bits in it that is the typical breast milk stool in the early days when you're still building your milk supply it's also a good sign if your baby is feeding from both breasts so often they would take their main meal on the one side and the dessert on the other side and then for the next feeding you start with the side that you've finished at so that both breasts are stimulated regularly and one side is not having long breaks so that the milk is being removed because milk removal will make more milk so that's the principles of supply and demand and then also in the early days especially the first two weeks you will have um, regular weight checks because babies lose up to seven to ten percent of their birth weight in the first few days and then they should have regained their birth weight by two weeks so it's important that um, the weight is monitored as well because ultimately it's a weight check that will tell you that your baby is starting to put on weight then it's also um, a good indication if you feel a bit fuller before feeds and softer after although not every mom even with a good supply is uh, is noticing that difference so the other signs that you're watching out for they're a little bit more reliable so the next question which i've sort of answered in the last question is do i need to wake my baby for feeding so in the newborn period so the first 28 days in particular you want your baby like we said your baby should feed at least eight or more times in 24 hours and if they are not meeting that target it is good practice to then wake your baby bring your baby skin to skin and start offering the breasts sometimes babies need a little bit longer to recover from birth or you had a late preterm so 37 38 week or not quite 40 weeks they also need a little bit more encouragement to feed actively because they sometimes just are still a bit more sleepy if your baby is sleepy at the breast and they're doing more non-nutritive sucking then using breast compressions is a good way to get more milk into them during a feeding session and then once your baby has regained their birth weight by two weeks so if it takes them a little bit longer maybe then you should discuss with your healthcare professional whether you should keep waking your baby but if they by themselves with just exclusive breastfeeding have reached their birth weight by two weeks and they're back to their birth weight you can start letting your baby take the lead a little bit more although you will still want to feed them at least eight or more times in 24 hours another common question as well is do i need to pump at night if my baby sleeps through the night so like we said in the last question if your baby's not back to birth weight yet is good practice to wake them for feed at night time as well but once they're back to birth weight they're gaining weight well you have a good supply then it is a natural progression that the gaps between nighttime feeds slowly get longer and um, then <clears throat> you may f start feeling a little bit fuller in the mornings and sometimes you may be uncomfortably full so that yes you sometimes may need to express a little bit at that point to avoid uh, the formation of block ducts and i've previously made an entire video on block ducts and treatment of block ducts so you may want to have a look at that but um usually they need to hand express or pump is usually only temporary till your body has regulated and will be able to go longer stretches between feeds and then you can hopefully enjoy a longer nighttime sleep the again. next question is when does my milk come in so your milk doesn't really come in or shoot in as such uh, it just gets 
bigger and larger in volume. So the first milk, the colostrum, which is the uh, yellow oily milk that you make even during pregnancy from as early as 16 weeks of pregnancy. That is the milk that um, you have in the first two days after birth and is very rich in proteins and antibodies. It seals the baby's gut and it is only available in small quantities but the baby's stomach um, on day one day two it's really quite small and um, that is all that they need because it, it is very nutrient dense as well and that's all they need if they're a healthy term baby and with no other medical issues so once the placenta is born and with the delivery of the placenta, mums get a real surge in milk making hormones. So then the volume of the milk increases and then the, um, the fat and the carbohydrates content in the sugar content of the milk increases as opposed to the colostrum. And that's um, what we describe as the milk coming in but really it just increases in volume the milk is already there at birth if you have the colostrum it doesn't mean that um, you don't have any milk after birth and then suddenly on day three you wake up with full breasts full of milk no it's just um, increasing in volume usually that happens in first time moms um, between day three and day four and in the second or third time round because you have made milk before your body is a little bit quicker to react so it's on average maybe a bit between a day two and a another day three. question is do i really need a nursing bra and uh, whilst you could continue wearing your pregnancy bra with pregnancy bras they are usually like nursing bras they are not underwired and not so constrictive as maybe a normal bra but a nursing bra is very handy to have because you can unclip it for easy access and like the pregnancy bra it wouldn't be cutting into any breast tissue um, which could cause blocked ducts or then mastitis um, as your breast size increases in pregnancy you already may have different size pregnancy bras between the first and the third trimester and then when um, the milk volume increases or your milk comes in then you may need to adjust the size again so yeah it is um, it is handy to have a nursing bra. The last one for today is can I take medication while breastfeeding? So there may be um, many reasons why nursing parents would like to take medication or have to take medication for a certain medical or health condition. And the good news is that many medications are safe for nursing mothers. It is always uh, important to check with your doctor. There's also a database called LactMed where you can read up about the safety of medication uh, during breastfeeding. The breastfeeding network in the UK, they have very good fact sheets um, about drugs and medication and breastfeeding. And um, Wendy Jones has done a lot of work on medication and breastfeeding and if a medication that you um, were on pre-pregnancy for certain health condition or even during pregnancy that it's not safe for breastfeeding then most of the time the good news is that there is a safe alternative to so discuss it with your doctor and together you can find a safe alternative that suits you. And your so needs. I hope you enjoyed your cup of tea listening to this breastfeeding Q&A. I think I'll um, do more Q&As in the future. I enjoyed it myself um, and thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more and otherwise until next time, hope your breastfeeding journey is going well.